All right, guys. Ooh, he's swimming fast. Want to get the net? Yeah. Let's get the small net quickly. All right, got to follow your fish, guys. Got to follow your fish. Got a nice fish on. We're good, we're good, we're good. Get ready. Get ready. Wow, they're so strong. So crazy. Nice. That's a solid one, too. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. I'm excited. All right, we're not going to mess too much with the fish, guys, but today we're up here in beautiful Stewart, Florida, freezing my freaking butt off, and I could feel this fish nibbling my jig the whole entire time using a goofy jig. Let me pop this right off. That's a really nice pompano. Been wanting to do this forever and catch them on goofy jigs right here in the St. Lucie Inlet. And that is a beautiful, beautiful pompano. Look how beautiful. It's gonna be so delicious. That's a stud too right there. All right guys, but basically I wanna get right back to fishing because there's schools that are coming through here in the area real quick. So let's see if we can get another one on here and then I'll show you exactly what I'm using so you guys can come out here and do this too. Nice job, dry sizzle. Come on, baby. <laughs> Whoa, they dart all over the place. This is how you lose them so quick. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Here we go. Yes. Woo! Slaying it. All right, right back to fishing. Oh, got something. Got something. I heard you. They're right back there. All right, guys, hooked up. Hooked up on another fish. I think it's the target species. Yes, it is. Waiting for Brian with the net one of these days. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Woo, they just take a scream and run. Look at that. I'm a slacker. They really pull hard. Like, it's just shocking how hard these fish pull. And they are the most delicious tasting fish ever. Fish! I got a fish! Commercial These guys. Nice commercial guys are helping us out. Yeah, commercial guys are talking to us over here, giving us a little pointers. Come over here, babe. Yeah, woo, nice. <laughs> All right, just talking to those guys over there. Got another pompano in the boat. That's what's up. We're getting closer and closer to our limit here and just really learning like how to do this because we have tried this many times in the past and over the last couple of years coming here during this time of the year when the pompano are running good and just kind of paying attention to what the commercial guys do around here. And that's how you usually learn to catch more fish. Come on, dude, work with me. It's very slimy. Got hooked right here in the corner on the actual goofy jig. And that's a three quarter ounce. And then this uh, teaser kind of buried when he was swimming, which is no big deal. And he wasn't going anywhere, double hooked. Dude, he's buried. Mm. Usually you land these fish pretty green. You eat it pretty close to the boat. There he is. It's a solid pound, pound and a half -er right there. Yeah. Beautiful fish. So cool looking. Woo, he doesn't want to cooperate. There he right. is. In the cooler. In the cooler he goes. That is pompano number four yeah, for me. The, oh, my food, I'm my cooler. All right, let's get back on these fish. Woo. Nice one. They get all pretty and golden when you land them. There's a couple nice ones there. Filling up the cooler, having a blast catching these guys. And like I said, just learning as we go along here. Oh, he's hooked up again over here. All right, it's time to get on the back on the spot. You got to keep moving as you drift and get back on these fish. Dude, look at the size of this pompano. <laughs> oh my God. Freaking huge. Dude, that's a slug. Oh my Lord. Look at the size of that thing. That looks like a jack. Holy sh that's insane. <laughs> I've never seen one that big. That's all day five pounds. You're welcome. No problem. That's Whoa. a trophy. That's a trophy. Look at that thing, y'all. <laughs> Commercial guy's slaying it over here. <laughs> Sick. You're welcome. See? Anglers help anglers. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Sick. Our pleasure. Yeah, no worries. That's sick. I got to get one. Let's go. <laughs> got to keep got to keep moving. Uh, it's a drip situation here in the inlet. We're done fishing. We'll give you a, a tackle time about yeah, exactly how we did it, all right? But right Say now, again. you got to stand a bite in the tide. Say it again. I was talking to the people. Oh, I'm sorry. Tell them when we're done, we're going to do a tackle time because we can't stop the fish right now. It's a bite, very tide dependent. We're switching from it's a slack right now, high slack. It's about to start going out, and the guys were saying uh, that they've been biting an outgoing too, and usually it's incoming. But anyway, they bite both yesterday and the outgoing, so we gotta stay on the outgoing right now. 
at least for the top of it. Getting hit again. I'm out of the zone, I'm sure. There we go. Nice. Nice job, Sizzle. Nice. I got the net. I'm going to do it myself. Are you going to do it yourself? Yes. Just do it. Do it professional, like a fly fisherman. Let's see, Sizzle. Like a fly fisherman, I'm going to do it myself. Woo! Woo! He just Sizzle. jumped out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just came up and jumped. Or it was probably part of my bending the rod there. But guys, the bite is turning back on. Look how gorgeous that fish is. Oh yeah, he's crazy. Really pretty oh, clean Oh, you got a bite, you got to move. All right guys, time to turn around and get back on these fish. And we're gonna show you exactly how we're doing this and post it on the Fish Angler app so you can come out here and catch your own big pompano. Right out here, cast as far as you can. Noish! Hooked up, come up front. <laughs> Brian's got one now. Bite's on fire. Hopefully. It's turning on, it's turning on. Looks like it's it. I guess it's the right species. How do you know? You can't even see it yet. No, there he is. Pretty. They run on the surface. It's really cool. Pompano, Woo! Pompano are a blast. They remind me a lot of like bonefish. They remind me of permit. Yeah, they're super I need cool. Need a little looking. more drag on these. Yeah, the Brian is like spinning on his drag over here. You're gonna use really light tackle with these guys. What are we using? Twelve pound, uh, twelve pound floral leader. I have twenty. Oh, twenty. Yeah, I'm using twenty. And you can use like fifteen. You can use like fifteen pound braid. And these are a nice light rod, man. The fish are going to be under five pounds. You know, five pounds is a monster. That one that they caught, that one the commercial guys caught before was six pounds. It's huge. Look at them permitting right now. It's going around a circle yeah, on this yeah, flat yeah. side. Yeah. And um, he's caught a little. Get him in the net. Oh. Ooh. So like. Just kicked. He's side hooked. You got to get him up. So yeah, you can use 50 pound braid, really light rod. Like you can use like a bass rod. You can have a great time. They can fight 10 times harder than bass. This is a three pound fish. If this was a bass, he'd be in the boat 10 minutes ago. Woo! Come on, bring that fish up. Uh, I gotta get some more drag on this thing. I don't know why he's still spinning on it. Look, well, I'm a fisherman. I don't want to just drag him in. No, that's a googan. He's, he's side hooked. So he's side hooked. All right. Nice, all right, I'm catching one. You go catch him. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. Once you get on these fish, the bite, they bite good. And all colors of the goofy jigs work well. Brian's using a pink and show them. Um, chartreuse one, and I'm just using straight pink. They seem to like them all. I'm not a baby. I got him with the pliers because he's like, just see how side hooked he gets? So that's a goofy jig. And we'll talk about it a little more tackle time, but we gotta get on the fish, see that? Yeah, we got one. Get a sizzle. What's net? No. Oh, you are crazy. Oh, my heart. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to start heading in there. Darcy's going to clean these fish, and I'm going to show you how to cook them. This is one of the most delicious fish that you're ever going to get. That's why there's so many boats out trying to catch ever. them. Yeah, it, they're really just delicious. And they fight like heck, and they're pretty common, so they're really a great fish. So now it's tackle time. I'm going to show you how to, how, to, how to catch them. Now, I already told you about the rod and reel setups. Some real light tackle, and you can just kind of have a great time, okay? And yeah. we used Nothing to, fancy. Yeah, don't anything fancy, like a BG. A Daiwa BG or a Okuma Azores, like a two or three thousand reels, all you need. And we used today with the Snook Nook. You know, we love the Snook Nook. And if you guys ever come down to Florida, Palm Beach, oh, actually Martin County, right? Yes. Jensen Beach, go to the Snook Nook. If you're local, you know it's been there for 200 million years. And it's almost like an historical attraction. It's been, it's right in the water too. You can get it by boat. Anyway, you know my buddy Paul Spurko, he's making uh, goofy jigs. These are called goofy jigs, right? And you can try different colors. And you're gonna tie them on with a loop knot. You guys know what a loop knot is, right? You can Google that or we'll tie one one day. But see, we've got a big loop here, and you put one face in one direction and the other face in the other, the teaser, okay? And you usually have two different colors for these, right? Uh, if you want. And Darcy likes a big four inch loop, so it goes like this. Yes. And then you're gonna cast it out and hit the bottom, and you do like a just a jerk, jerk pause, okay? It's, and it's almost like, it's like finesse fishing for you bass guys, right? It's like using a worm, right? Yeah. Or a flare hawk. It's the same same thing, right? And you're gonna whatever they have different weights, and whatever weight matches the depth and the current you're gonna do. If you're not feeling the bottom, you're not catching a popping, all right? So you want to make sure that you feel it, rub it against the bottom. Exactly. And hitting, and then jerk jerk, 
Exactly. Oh, I'll taste the bottom. And then also just this uh, whole rig right here, like slide that teaser back and forth. That teaser is going to go up and down in the water column. So when this hits the bottom, Actually, this that, the bottom teaser, like Ooh, that see, teaser see. is going to fall and it's going to fall slower. And for whatever reason, Pompano love that and go crazy for that teaser that moves and it kind of mimics a shrimp, they think, or whatever other, you know, like, um, yeah. like uh, mussels and oysters and stuff crazy, they eat on the bottom. I'm sorry, but look at these crazy colors. So you, you, whatever you want. Yeah, and you're going to use whatever colors work that day. So you're going to have to constantly switch up colors to see what works. And today for me, it was pink and white. And then I switched to yellow and chartreuse and I lost a ton of red. Today. Yeah, that's why I went this And one. so now I have, this is the <laughs> last colors. of what I have. Yeah. Now, George, now, when you actually get the bite for the top, now she is the, I know how to fish, guys. I know how to book, I'm like a book fisherman. I know how, I know I can read and how to do it. But she actually does it. She has a touch. Tell us how you actually get the bite. Um, yeah, you just <laughs> cast it out and you, you, you know, you, well, I was just twitching once and then letting it pause and about every three, four seconds you twitch it again, but very light twitches, just barely raise it off the bottom. And then you feel like a little nibble there. And then most, most of the time this fish was there. So then you just set the hook on them and then they instantly pull drag and that's a lot of fun. Right, and a few it's, times, it's, a J it's a J hook, of course. So you got to give it a little jerk. Exactly. Yeah. And all of them were mostly hooked on the teaser. Uh, but some did end up eating the actual poofy jig or pompano jig, you would call it. And um, yeah, that's pretty much how you do there it. I am. Pretty simple. I just learned how to use a camera. Pretty simple. All right, so when you get home, Darcy's gonna clean them for you, and then we're gonna have a delicious meal. Yes. All right, let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to fillet our delicious Florida pompano. And I'm so excited to fillet this fish and have it. We're gonna decide, we just decided to do this as a sushi, fresh pompano sushi. And if you've never had it before, you're missing out. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. I'm just getting my knife nice and sharp with my diamond edge sharpener. You always want a sharp knife, especially when it comes to sushi here. So we're gonna cut it right on camera and get this beautiful fish filleted. And the cool thing too that I wanna to announce too, on the website, I've got brand new uh, Florida pompano pendants, sterling silver pendants that look exactly like the fish. How cool is that? And I know you guys love to catch pompano. Pompano is so relatable. You catch them up and down the beach here in Florida. And this is the time of year to go and do it. So if you're interested in these, they're on the website. Go check it out and you want to support my small business. Let's dive right in using my seven inch blade today. We're going to go right behind the fins, but you want to make a 45 degree cut. Go back a little further up towards the head so you get as much meat as possible. Now these fish have a lot of head meat. You're, you would be super surprised how much head meat is here. So we don't want to waste any of that, of course. Look how far you could go up there. That's insane. A lot of people just make their cut right there and then you miss out on all that extra delicious meat. So now we'll just follow that backbone right down as always, as any traditional fish, just like so. This fish is easy to fillet, but at the same time, I would say it's a more difficult fish to fillet because the skin is super thin. Also, it's easy to cut through their bones. So you can easily cut through to the other side if you're not careful, which is not a big deal, but it just makes your life a little harder. So now we're just gonna follow these bones. See, almost cut through the other side. This, this knife is so sharp. Then they got a little bit of a raised spine bone here. It's not too, too big. And then just angle back down. And we'll slab off this beautiful section of meat here. Their meat is actually pretty firm and white once it's cooked. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have pompano and you want to go ahead and sh go ahead and share some awesome, awesome pompano recipes with us. Go ahead and drop that down below. Um, but they also have a good amount of fat content. So once cooked, they pretty much look white. And now there's rib cage bones right here too. Those do not protrude as much as like snapper or grouper or anything. So I, as always, it's like I like to say, don't cut through those bones. Leave the innards intact. And look at this fillet. Beautiful. Also, I would recommend when you catch a pompano to bleed it right away. I do not bleed this particular fish, which is not a big deal, not the end of the world, but go ahead and bleed it as usual. But see all that head meat we got out of there? I mean, we did not have any waste. No waste whatsoever. I don't know if you can hear that. But if you can hear the bones, that means you did a good job. Now let's get the other side knocked out. All right. So that fish is now done. Good job on that. You can see right through them. That means you did a good job. And don't forget, always get that head meat out of those fish. You'd be surprised. A lot of fish have so much head meat. Now we got our two beautiful pompano fillets. First thing we need to do, of course, is go ahead and skin them. And the skinning is also difficult, like I said, a little bit. So what you want to do is you kind of just want to go parallel with your cutting, um, whatever you're cutting on. 
So kind of keep your knife up a little bit and I'm gonna show you exactly why these fish have a dark line and dark blood on their actual skin. Even if you do bleed them, they'll still have this. So you're gonna leave a little bit of meat on the skin, which is not the end of the world. You see right there, see how that's thin that is? That's not a big deal, we'll just knock that out right out. But I cut through that pretty easily. And like I said, you just wanna leave a little bit of meat on there. And you can see right here why we do that. It has all that fishy stuff right there, which you don't wanna eat, particularly when you're having it as sushi. All right, so we're gonna put this one to the side and we're gonna get our cutting board right here and we're gonna prepare him for sushi. So now I just wanna go ahead and knock out that last piece of skin. We don't wanna eat that as sushi. Sharp knife gets a job done here. And then the same thing with his bloodline. We're gonna remove that bloodline completely. There's of course pin bones that go back to about halfway. So you wanna get those out as well. And kind of angle your knife and get all that dark red meat out. Because like I said, it's not going to be good for sushi. And basically he's all set for sushi. All right, so we got our two loins, like I said. And so now what we're gonna do is, we got a top loin and a bottom loin. Now the top loin is gonna be best for sashimi grade meat. The bottom loin is going to be, or belly meat, is going to be for sushi meat. So I'm gonna show you two ways of cutting this up. We're gonna use the same exact knife. Let's get it nice and clean. And then what we're gonna do is, since we got head meat here actually, we'll just probably cut it like this. But you wanna go at a 20 degree angle and we're gonna make bigger size chunks, like I said, for sashimi. There's his head meat, that's gonna be delicious. So you wanna go at 20 degrees and just don't saw, make one nice stroke, just like so. And that stuff right there, about four or five pieces of that, is gonna be worth approximately five to six dollars at a sushi restaurant. They'll sell it to you like so. So that's our sushi, sashimi. And then with our bottom belly meat, we're gonna make that sushi meat. So now how we do that is we're gonna make it thinner, of course, and we're gonna go more to angle, and just go one nice swipe. There's one. Ooh, I'm gonna start high enough. Just like that. And then you wanna have, when you cut these thinner, you wanna make sure it bends over on your finger a little bit. If it doesn't, that means you made it too thick for sushi pieces. So that's actually a perfect piece. Same thing here. Thinner the better, especially put in. Put in likes it thinner. Ooh, that's a nice piece right there. Make a few of these. We're gonna eat it raw right now. Look at that. Delicious. Nice. All right. Let's go ahead and eat them right now for the taste test. Did someone say taste test? <laughs> <laughs> Time to eat, guys. Ooh, all right, I got another. It's gonna be delicious. I can't wait for this, guys. You know I love sushi, being a fancy New Yorker. And I've already planned, I got a little, we made some uh, sticky rice inside. It's so easy, just read the instructions on the thing. Yes. On the package, and uh, there we go. Oh, I got one more sushi piece. I forgot my chopsticks, but we'll just eat with our hands. No big deal, we're outside. They're all saying, you're not even rinsing that damn fish anyway, Dark Sizzle. <laughs> I rinsed the blade, I did it on a clean cutting board, so we're not even gonna rinse it. Yes. No, I Don't prepared this fish. It was honestly caught yesterday, and he was been in the cooler, ice and cold, and he's fresh pompano. Doesn't totally get fun. much better than that. So we got beautiful sushi pieces and sashimi. Mm -hmm. You have little rice balls, maybe it's a little smaller than a golf ball. And then for your, for your sushi pieces, what you wanna do is, Take a piece of wasabi. This piece is actually gonna be for Brian because Brian loves wasabi. Yeah. And I rub it right on a piece of sushi that you wanna put on the fish. Just like that. Is that too much for you? No. Okay, that's good. I like it hot. Brian likes it hot, I don't. And then no. you take it and you put it over the fish and then you kinda of just wanna fold and turn, fold and press down on both sides and just fold that around the fish, around the rice. It's a sushi bowl. And it's a bowl. beautiful presentation right there. I don't know if they can see that. But maybe you can just show them up close as you roll or something. I will. I cool. did. Cool. And I can dip it. And eat it. And I'm going to make my own sushi one with no wasabi. That wasabi gave me some kick. That's perfect mm. right there. All right, here we go. This is my first pompano, fresh, raw pompano ever. Doing it live on camera just for you guys. I've been eating it all afternoon. Brian's been having it all afternoon. <laughs> I promise you I have not. Here we go. What do you think? Well, tastes like sushi. 
Listen, you gotta have manners and not chew with talk with your mouth open. I'm from New York, I'm not familiar okay, with that. Okay, so unfortunately, <laughs> from wiping that wasabi earlier, <laughs> I totally just got that on my lip and it's killing me right now. But besides that, it is really good. Um, I would say it's just a different texture than what I'm used to with like tuna, well, like blackfin tuna we eat a lot, yeah. and wahoo. But there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, you can see it's I'm perfectly white. really shocked how good that is for all y'all. Really and, uh, good. The difference only, I wouldn't, you know, whatever. It's, it's, you know, all fish and all proteins mostly, they're, they're very bland if you eat them by themselves. You know, no one eats chicken or any fish by themselves, not even shrimp or lobster, really. Mm. Um, so it, it's, just, it's not like a melt in your mouth. If you, if you make it really thin, I assume it will, but mm. what? It's not a melt in your mouth sushi, but it has it's a tiny bit more firmness. But it, I mean, mm -hmm. but there's no fishy flavor at all. There's mm -hmm. Zero fishy. So it's that's one of the reasons it's sushi. So you know, zero fishy, and it's just delicious. Like I said, like this fish is a high fat content, so it just had that pure piece of sashimi right there. Right. And he's right. It does not melt in your mouth like tuna or sushi wahoo, but it's more a little bit of like not crunch to it, but it's just firmer. Yeah, it's slightly firmer. And you can feel like that's a little bit of that oily like texture, meaty stuff on your tongue. It's actually quite good. But Delicious. unique and different. And I just never in a million years would thought that I'd be eating the pompano raw. I mean, it is really good. Really good. No joke. It's I know. Delicious. So I hope you guys get to try this. And if you have, man, so awesome that you guys are doing that. Because um, it is so good. And I just learned a thing or two as well. And how much head meat are in those fish and how yeah. to blast catching them. And honestly, I can't wait to go do it again. So go ahead and drop a comment down below if you want to see more Pompano videos. And of course, we got more epic content coming out real soon to you. We got some awesome fish lately on our boat and uh, just been having a blast here in Florida following our dreams. Thanks yep. to you all. So thank you so much for watching this. Oh, let me just mention the sponsors. Don't yeah. forget Smith's Knives. We got, we got, you know, we do it at the end now. Don't mention, don't forget Smith's Knives. She has a code 50% off. Down below. In the video description below. Check out Darcy's down below. nautical necklaces down <laughs> in the video description below. And uh, whatever else we use today, you know, of course, yes. land shark and fish angle and all that great stuff. Any info that you would ever need is going to be down below if you're interested, y'all. So thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Drop a like, drop a comment if you like us and love us. <laughs> and until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and keep, and keep on, on catching. catching.